How about that one for a beautiful Japanese magnolia? I mean, that that one is, it's just as you can see, it's starting to lose its leaves. But Charlie, pan across the street and show them the, the one on that side of the street. And look, look at all the, all the petals on the ground over there. The leaves are already coming out. Hey Charlie. Ain't it grand living in the south when you get this kind of flowers going? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. You don't get that all the time. That is just absolutely magnificent. Stunning. All right. Okay. You ready? You ready? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, Mr. Redden! Good time, Charlie. We are in New Orleans today, and today is February. 23rd. I thought we were in Metairie. Metairie, that's right. Yeah, Metairie. yeah. Metairie, which is a suburb of New Orleans, just on the other we're side. We're across the lake. Yeah, and, and, and that's really one of the interesting things that I, I'm, I want to find out uh, today is because we have Lake Pontchartrain, which is a massive lake between what would they consider the North Shore, where Charles and I live, and the South Shore over here, it, it actually acts as like a, a, a barrier so it, it controls the temperature a little bit more on this side and well we have the Gulf of Mexico which is only 50 miles from here and then uh, the Mississippi River which is probably only about 10 miles from here so this area is generally a little bit further along as far as what's going on in nature than it is on the North Shore by at least two or three weeks so the hive that we're getting ready to open up it's it's in between the floor joists and we've been here how many times a few times a lot yeah a few <laughs> times so nikki the homeowner he still he just doesn't want to fix the the where the bees are getting in so they keep coming in and you'll see when we get upstairs how many times we've, we've opened up the floor to take bees out of here but let me grab the well charlie's going to grab the can we're going to go over there uh, on the side of the house show you where the bees are making their entrance and uh, by the grace of God, Charlie. Oh, we're gonna get these bees. And we're gonna bring them take back them to, to the, the Abbey. Yeah, right. They're right. our bees. Let's wrangle, brother. This is the, the area that the bees are, are making their entrance. And as Charlie pans up, here you go. You actually can see the bees going in. Look at the pollen that these bees are bringing in. There is no, no way that we have this much activity on our bees across the lake. So I'm, I'm really curious to find out when we get inside how developed these bees are, if we have drones in there. It's just, just a lot of questions on my mind. We're gonna get inside, we'll show you the, what the bees look like and move the things around, pull up the, the carpet, get everything ready and we're going to start pulling these bees out. Come on, Charlie, let's get inside. Let's get them. Granddaughter's bed is right here. And when we bring the thermal camera over, look at the, look at the signature that these bees are giving us. Look, look at underneath the, the leg of the bed, the glow right there, and then along the edge of the wall. The hive itself goes all the way back to right yeah. here. At least now, it doesn't mean that there's comb further back this way, but for sure we got bees from here to right there. All right, we're going to move all the, the bed, pull back the carpet, and show you these bees. As you can tell, there's a four, a one, a two, a three, and then also here. We have been here five times this is this will make actually this will actually be the seventh time because we pull bees out of 
one or two of these other ones again. So today it's, it's the same thing. And today the bees are hiding behind door number two. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a simple matter of me screwing the handles down to the plywood right here, undoing the screws, piece of plywood's already cut, and I'm gonna lift, hopefully I'll be able to lift that whole hog out of here and set it on the table. And here is a, a little better view of what the bees look like using the thermal camera. And like I said, it, it, it doesn't appear to be a lot of bees in there, but we're still early in the year, so that colony is growing. I love attaching handles to plywood when, when I need to lift the plywood off the floor because it just gives me a, a great advantage um, to, to lifting the weight of, of that hive. Now, as far as how the bees have constructed this comb in here, I, I don't know whether there's going to be an overlap of the comb underneath this plywood um, I, onto this next section. So it, it generally is not a clean lift. Uh, I'll tear out some of it. Um, some of it will be, some of the piece of comb may fall off. Uh, but I know for certain these bees have been in here for a year because Charlie and I, last year when we did a removal, we passed by here and the bees were in here. I'm pretty sure we should, I should be able to just to lift the board up and the, the, the hive should be attached to it. So <laughs> uh, let's find out how that's going to work out for that's us. That's the game plan. Yeah. Okay. I just want to start it so that I can get this lift done cleanly. All right, so it's all broken loose. Hopefully I won't damage too much of the comb as I lift it. All right. You ready, Charlie? Ready to go. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, a bunch of it fell. Yeah. Look at that. So you can see it tore out here and who knows we might have been lucky our queen may be on this section right here but Charlie, we do have a lot of the comb still in the wall right here so I'm going to start with this area down here and start removing this stuff what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove Instead of vacuuming the bees here, I'd like to get them up on that table. So I'm going to start removing some of this comb and just putting it on the table with bees and everything on it. And who knows, our queen may be on one of the sections that we pull out. Thank <laughs> you. 
What's that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna squirt some stuff down in there. See if we can make them come up. Yeah, make them come out. Uh, maybe before I do that. Yeah, because it makes just too too many bees. I can't really see in there. I'm gonna spray some honey bandit in there right now. I want to push those bees out of here and see if we can find her running up on the floor if she was was down there. Otherwise we'll have she'll be up there. So let's let's get the bees out of here first because there are a lot of bees in there.
the honey bandit really did a great job pushing all the bees out of there. I mean, we've got a few in there still, but I think it was a good move to run the bees out of there instead of keeping all that comb in there and trying to get the bees off of it. Uh, I think that was a better move. And now our queen wasn't here, so I'm, I'm hoping she's going to be over there or in the windows because <laughs> we got a bunch of bees flying around. Let's go ahead and start getting our comb onto our frames and I'm going to keep as many bees on that brood as I can. Um, it'll just all work out for the better. We've already got, as you can see, the frames are prepped with the rubber bands on one half where all I have to do is drop the comb in there and put the rubber bands on and we're going to drop the bees and everything inside of there and look for our queen of course. Let's get some of this comb framed up. I want to put as much of it in here, all the stores that they, they had. We're going to get all that in here that I can possibly do it. We have our worker brood right here, and look at this already. We got some drone brood. Drone brood. Right in there. I still haven't seen a drone yet, but we'll see. There you go, there's our first frame. Frame number two. Nice one. I wouldn't mind if I just inadvertently put her in the box, but I would just rather have the certainty of knowing that she was in the box and unharmed.
Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Well, folks, it looks like more like Frankenstein <laughs> than a piece of coal, but it's pretty good. Charlie? What's that? What color butt do you think this queen's going to have? Oh, I think a big red one. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Well, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be looking good if we found our queen. Well, it'd be looking a lot better. Yeah. But we've got a lot of bees still all around here. Look at this, folks. Charlie. Look at look at what we've got. <laughs> Whoa, how about that? How about that? Under the bucket. Under the bucket. She wanted to get in that bee vac, but there was no entrance right there. So I'll get my clip and we're going to put her in it. Let me hold the bucket. All right. Okay, I got the bucket. She, that girl's not going anywhere. Uh -uh. No, she ain't going nowhere. All right. You were right, Charlie. She's a red butt girl. Yep. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. So now, now we don't have to really worry about the other stuff. We can just knock bees into the box or just vacuum them up. That's it. All right, let's go ahead and do that job, Charlie. All right. Placing the queen on the box is working. We're getting some of the bees to come onto it. But what I want to do now is I want to put the box closer to this wall where these bees are and put her a little bit closer. Maybe we can get a lot of those bees to to migrate. Most of the bees are vacuum, but I gotta, I gotta stop them from flying. So we're gonna close up the, um, the box. And to do that, we're going to put our queen on a frame. All right, 
So now our queen is all locked up. Bees are in the box, so all I gotta do now is vacuum these bees, and Charlie can eat lunch. <laughs> I got one more thing to show you folks, and it's down here. Check this out. It ain't there no more, but a couple of cockroaches. Yeah, it's got cockroaches. <laughs> And I can smell the honey bandit, huh, Charlie? Yep, sure can. And you can see where the bees came in. Oh, you yeah. can see daylight. Yeah, and so we'll have some robber bees in here for a little while. Because there's, there's a bit of honey still in here. So they'll come in here, but it'll all be dried up very shortly. Charlie, you ready to wrap this video up? I'm ready to wrap it up. I think that's about it. Van's all loaded up, but Charlie says we got to show these bees being turned loose. So we're headed back across the lake and we're going to turn these bees loose. See y'all. Yes, later. indeed. Let's do it. Our box is now set up on the back porch of the honey house. And the reason I, I, I do this is because if I got to feed the bees, they have to be close nearby where I can find them easily. So they're sitting on, it'll be on the back porch of the honey house. So I, mixed up a, mixed up, set up a, a quart jar of honey. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to release our queen right now. Uh, I'll, I'll show you, let me, Charlie, show, show how many bees we wound up getting in the box already. So we got a few in there, but we're getting ready to turn our um, other bees loose. So let's bounce these here. And here are our other bees that we vacuumed up. Now, our queen is right here. This is where our queen is. All right, so we're just gonna turn our vacuum bees loose. There's probably gonna be a big cluster on this lid, so let me get them first. Bounce these girls right here. And they're going to fly up, but they're going to come down because our queen is in here. And then these, these are the rest of the bees that, that I vacuumed up. Let's see if they're going to want to walk in here. Come here. Help them. Do what? We're going to help them. Walk. Oh, you're going to bounce them. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. still to be able to know they're here and they're going to come down they'll come down well that didn't take long at all did it nope sure didn't that looked pretty easy to me our bees have i mean it, it's not even been five minutes and they're already here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the the lid i'm going to bounce these bees off and I've got my honey right here and I'm going to place it over my hole, but that hole is too big so I've got to narrow it down. So let me do this first. I'm going to bounce these bees into it. I'm going to take a piece of tape and close off that entrance a little bit. Now my hole is just going to be where the little holes for the honey will come in. Any bees up here, they'll be able to escape out of that hole. That's, I'm not worried about that. And we're going to put our shim on. And then our cover. Now, I still got to come back 
uh, tomorrow is Saturday, so it'll it'll probably be on Monday. I'll come back and uh, I'll turn turn our, our queen queen loose. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. No, Ralph, not yet, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? I don't know. I'm falling down. Let's see. Let me, I got to pull something up on my phone here. We got. We got to make a couple of announcements. Now we were going to try to do this without a veil. Yeah. But uh, the girls got a little testy. Yeah. They. They just a little bit. Uh, they. They. They're a little bit nervous right now. Yeah. So Charlie, what about our removal today? Oh, I thought it was pretty interesting, and uh, it wasn't. It was pretty much straightforward since we had been there so many times. <laughs> yeah, and, that, was, uh, that was easy. Yeah, it was easy. We had everything ready to go. Uh, the, the, one, the one thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, at, here we are, uh, February the 23rd, and I mean, we're, 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 everybody's biting at the bit to do splits and, and get this bee th season going. And it, it, it's, it, it's just not here yet. And even though, the across the lake is generally two weeks ahead of here uh, at on the North Shore. Even even what I saw in that that cone, we we did find a couple of drone cells. I didn't see any drones walking on the comb at all. Um, there were not definitely not enough uh, honey stores in there. There was pollen in there, but it, it just it just not built up. The hives just aren't built up enough. So I'm still thinking that we're pretty much on course as far as doing our splits. We won't be starting our splits until the beginning of March. Uh, in fact, as it turns out, I won't be here uh, on March, the weekend of the March 4th uh, first, because I'll be in Tulsa speaking uh, at the Oklahoma Beekeepers Association. And then on the 7th, I'll be in North Carolina, in New Bern's, uh, New Bern, talking uh, to the North Carolina Beekeepers Association. Uh, so when I get back from... And I'll be fishing. <laughs> I'm going to go fishing while he's doing all that. Yeah. Well, when, when I get back, that's when we'll be starting our, um, in earnest on, on our splits. Now, two things that I want to announce. I know because everybody is, is curious about this. Who won the Hillco Extractor? Who won the Hillco Extractor, Charlie? A young lady from, um, come on, you remember? No. <laughs> She's from Louisiana. I know that. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, Zachary. Zachary. Zachary, very Louisiana. Good. You see that? I remember. So the winner, the winner of the extractor, her name is, is? let me see. I got it. I got it because John sent it to me. So the winner of the extract extractor, the Hillco Enduro Extractor, was Haley Bentz. Now, John donated the extractor, but then he also went a little bit extra and he threw in two gift certificates as well, one for $150, and that went to Art Monk won that, and a $75 gift card went to Bill Ferrone, Ferrone. Uh, he won that. So there were oh, just over 6,000 entrance into that contest so yeah, that's 5,000 was mine and I still didn't get it <laughs> yeah well Charlie was another one who was disqualified too <laughs> so congratulations to all who um, won the uh, to, to the winners of, of the extractor as well as the gift cards and so thank uh, thank you John Hill for for that donation and making somebody out there really really great guy really great happy. guy now, the last thing is I need to do a shout out for three of my newest members. Uh, the first one is Rex Bivens. The second one is Jared Doucette. And the third one is who, Charlie? Bert Pons. Bert Pons. So thank you all very much for becoming members on my channel. And if you would like to uh, become a member on my channel, it's not mandatory. I'm still going to be producing videos that you don't have to pay to watch but if you want to support me in a little bit a little bit more well that would be wonderful but it's it's strictly optional strictly optional
I think that's all I got, Charlie. I think that's about it. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless us, Mr. Ed and well, uh, really good time, Charlie, sitting <laughs> right here. We're out here until the next video. God bless everybody. Thank y'all.